Joining us now, Democratic Congresswoman Sharice Davids of Kansas, a state that uh, has, has a big role in this um, in this debate. And, and, and Congresswoman, uh, it feels like things are getting worse, not better. So what we're seeing is a big political loser for Republicans, n not in step with where most of the country is on this. But yet we're waiting to see whether Mifepristone is going to be taken off the market. Yeah, and I think, you know, this is, well, first of all, good morning. Um, I'm glad we're talking good about morning. this because because of how important it is. And, you know, I think uh, exactly what you're saying about the, the political consequences is absolutely true. And uh, I also think, you know, this is... I, the last time I was on here, I think we were talking about how how scared uh, people were and how we were already seeing lives being upended because of the the consequence of Roe being overturned. And uh, we would think that knowing so many people disagree with taking these extreme uh, steps toward, uh, frankly, inserting politicians into very private decisions um, would, would have been quashed because of the last election. You know, in Kansas, we fought really hard to push back on a constitutional amendment that would have opened the doors to some of these extreme uh, measures. And, and then in November, we saw uh, people push back against uh, politicians who were taking extreme stances on this uh, as well. So I do think that uh, we're hearing loudly and clearly that what folks want are, uh, are, are their rights to be protected. They don't want their kids yeah. to have less rights than they did. And uh, yeah, this is, it's actually mind boggling to see um, steps like this. Yeah. So tell us what, what, what we can learn from Kansas or what uh, those who want to protect the health of women can learn from yes. Kansas in terms of getting people to the voting booth and really making change happen. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think it's been uh, very impressive to see how many people are making their voices heard, not just at the ballot box, but um, in every aspect of uh, in, in every aspect of our society. And the second thing I would say is uh, recognizing that this you know, what we're talking about right now is is not just the the threat and real danger of uh, access to reproductive health care being um, uh, being on the table because of one judge uh, who, frankly, wrote an opinion that uh, even conservative uh, conservative pundits and judges have said uh, is uh, lacking in in science. And uh, I think that that's one piece of it. The other piece is that we we absolutely need to make sure that the FDA is able to continue to do the work that it does, approving medications that, frankly, will save people's lives. And I think that um, folks should make sure to, to let their lawmakers know, um, both at the state and federal level, because this is, uh, we're talking about a federal, uh, we're talking about a federal case right now, but these things are happening all over our state, all over the country. Uh, Kansas is absolutely right at the center of that. It certainly is, Congresswoman. I was going to ask you about that because the vote in your state on the proposed constitutional amendment that would say there was no right to an abortion in your state that took place last August was seen as one of the first post-Roe decision tests. Where is the country on this? And by almost 20 points, the people of Kansas voted to protect the right to abortion. And that's in a state that hasn't voted for a Democrat for president since Lyndon Johnson. So what did that vote tell you and what should it say about the way people are feeling in the rest of the country on this issue? Yeah, I mean, I think what it what it tells me is that uh, people are are feeling the impacts of this. In Kansas, what we're seeing is our, our neighboring states had recently uh, in, either enacted or um, brought back old old laws uh, after Roe was overturned. And, and then this attempt to take what I would consider to be an extreme step, trying to change the state constitution, um, you know, I think that I, my hope is that people will see, you know, what what folks want are are lawmakers who are actually trying to make things better. You know, people in Kansas are still trying to figure out uh, how to, 
our small businesses are dealing with supply chain issues. Our our farmers are dealing with droughts or flooding and, and want to make sure that we get a farm bill done. And uh, instead of uh, having as, as much bandwidth to focus on those things, we've got uh, politicians who, uh, frankly, in D.C., are, are not only threatening uh, access to the full range of reproductive health care, they're also you know, focusing on things that are, are not going to bring down costs for people, you know, and I, I think that I, I think what every single person who's in Congress right now should be uh, learning from what we saw in the over this last year is uh, folks want us to do our jobs and, and make sure that their government is working for them. Juanita, it's Jen. I wanted to ask you, just as Democrats and pro-choice candidates face 2024, I mean, after the overturning of Roe, it was very visceral, right? It felt real. People knew exactly what that meant. This battle over Mif Mifepristone feels, so you and I know what it is, and a lot of people do out there, but it feels a little bit more right. obscure. I mean, what is? what do you think the best case uh, Democrats should be making out there? And what should kind of pro-abortion groups, what, what should be the messaging that they are arguing out there to make this clear, the stakes clear? to people. I think emphasizing the fact that these extremist attacks on all forms of abortion care are not going to stop, because in addition to this Mifepristone case, you still have state leaders like DeSantis passing six-week abortion bans before many pregnant people even know they're pregnant. And so I think it's important for Democrats and advocates to extend, extensively emphasize the fact that the attacks are not going to stop. This is something that Republicans and extremist anti-abortion advocates are going to push for until they get a national abortion ban. And that's a frame that is honestly a winning message, right? You know, Jim mentioned Wisconsin earlier, and when we talk about Kansas as well, understanding that voters are willing to cross partisan ideological lines, demographic lines across race, age, and more in order to support abortion access is a clear indicator that abortion rights is a winning message, especially when you have Republicans who cannot justify the cruelty behind the bans that they have been promoting for years now. And so when I see people like Tim Scott, for example, on the campaign, campaign trail, him and Han, unable to explain why you want a national abortion ban. It just says to Democrats and strategists, this is the message you should be running with because this is what's going to stick with the people. Absolutely. Juanita Tolliver, thank you very much for being on this morning. And Democratic Congresswoman Sharice Davids of Kansas, thank you as well.